Hi! Powered exoskeletons and big arm robots have long been common in science fiction. Just think of the power loader from Aliens. But now they're making their way into the real world. This is the Guardian GT from Sarkos, and I'm going to go check it out, see exactly what it does, but I promise I won't harm any aliens. Super size exoskeleton is controlled by a human and it amplifies your reach and strength. It's structured like a scaled up person, except each arm is 7 feet long and can lift up to 500 pounds each. So what are some of the specific applications that the GT can be used for? Uh, some of the most interesting ones right now are in the nuclear decommissioning industry. So when you think about it, we've got all these power plants that were built 30 or 40 years ago, and many of them are at the end of their useful life. So they need to be deconstructed or decommissioned. Um, in many cases, you're talking about environments that are radioactive uh, to varying levels of, of radioactivity, uh, dangerous, difficult, small, confined spaces, but they need to be dismantled in just the same way that they were constructed. So taking things apart. So if we can send a robot in that can use human tools, for example, human scale power tools, and be able to go in and start cutting things, dismantling things, um, making them into smaller pieces so they can be easily transported and taken out of the power plant, that's a tremendous opportunity. Basically, again, keeping humans out of harm's way. So these are just kind of very big construction projects, if you will, except it's taking something apart instead of putting it together. Okay, question for you. Are you the real life Tony Stark? <laughs> no chance. No <laughs> chance. He's way cooler. Way cooler. This is Chris, who's going to walk me through the machine before I get to try it out myself. So this is our shoulder joint right here. This is a joint here that allows us to have rotation about the upper arm. Mm -hmm. This is our elbow. And down here, it's got uh, a joint that allows wrist rotation and then two more joints that allow us the other two degrees of freedom of a wrist. All right, and when it comes to the fingers, it's, it's really a claw. Yeah, so it's a claw that can do a few things. It's, it's got two fingers that can open and close like this, and then it's got a thumb that can close to grip things as well as swing out of the way and allow kind of a flat palmed uh, action if you need it. So let's talk about the camera that's up there. So okay. this is going to give you a basically, it's almost like the eyes, right? It's yep. positioned in the same way. So what cameras are these? and how they're talking to, how you're seeing it as the operator. So these cameras are placed in a position that mimics where your head might be if you were this big. And it's got all the movements that a person's head would have. So I can look side to side, I can look up and down. And the, the spacing of the cameras, is, as you notice, is wider than a person's eyes because yeah. remember, this is a scaled up person. So we want to kind of continue that magnification of a person in all respects that we can so that when a person gets in, all the scaling is similar to what they're used to. Mm -hmm. There is an advantage of having the cameras here. One is you're not used to seeing arms out in front of you. You're used to seeing your own arms, yeah. right? So when you're looking through the camera, these feel like your arms. Now it's time for Chris to get into position and show us just how precise this robot can be.
ground to show that I can pick it back up. It's my turn. Because it's my first time, I won't get to use the saw, unfortunately, but I will get to try to lift this metal pipe off the cylinder and put it back on. In general, moving the hand's position is, all you gotta do is move your hand where you want it to go. But the controls for the gripper are down here. The, this trigger finger right here will control the thumb of the gripper. So when it's all the way out, that means your thumb is it's all the way open and mm -hmm. swung, swung around. Yep. As you start to squeeze it, it'll start to swing around. And then at some point, it will be all the way in. And it will, then if you keep, keep squeezing, it will mm -hmm. start to close. And then this joystick up here, the user of your thumb, will actually control the width of the fingers. In short, you use your finger to control the thumb. Mm -hmm. And your thumb, and your thumb to the control the fingers. All right, I love it. It's all reversed. Yeah. Brilliant. Then I'm only going to have the right arm, aren't I? The Correct. left arm is just going to be just straight yep. out. Left arm will be locked. Okay, let's do it. Okay. The GT is powered by batteries, diesel or propane, and it can run for more than seven hours at a time. I can't give you the price though, because each GT is custom built for every order. That was incredible. I couldn't believe that I was controlling such a powerful robot and it felt so easy. And I got it on the first try, which I didn't think I was gonna be able to do. It was truly an incredible sensation. Like I was moving my arm and once I kind of got over the fact that it was a robot, it just felt like an extension of my body with the same dexterity and everything that I could do with my hand normally. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this episode, then I have covered exoskeletons before, but a mechanical one. So you can click and you know where to find it. Get away from it, Mitch! <laughs>